Spiritual Harvest Ministries. Hi, I'm Pastor Bob of Spiritual Harvest. And we're going to have fun today in the Word of God. We're going to talk about walking in our newness. Amen. Everybody understand that. We're living in a newness, right? Hallelujah. But first, let's go to the throne. Bow our head to the Lord and just ask Him for His wisdom, His understanding. Amen. Holy and glorious God. Lord, we humbly come to you, every single one of us, Lord. We ask you, Holy Spirit, to quicken your word in our heart, Lord. Give it life, Lord, so that we can be ministered to thereby. Father, we'll always give you the praise, we'll always give you the glory, we'll always give you all the honor. And we will always thank you for the victories in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So we're going to talk about walking in our newness. And for the last couple of weeks, I've been leading people to the, they call it the sinner's prayer. Amen. Leading, praying to ask Christ into our heart. And we'll do the same after this message. But first of all, we have to understand that we're not under the law. Everybody understand that, right? There's no more eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, right? No more Sabbath, hallelujah. No more tie, no more that, none of that. Amen. That's the law. You can't, you know, Grace is the new wine Jesus talked about. Grace is the new wine that you can't put into the law. The old bottle. Everybody up now is starting to click, right? <laughs> you can't sow grace, the new garment, right? A new patch on an old garment. Hallelujah. Because if you wash it, the new patch is going to shrink. The old garment is already shrunk. Can we see it? And that's what Jesus was talking about. You can't put us into the law. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So we have... You know, we still follow the ten. They're written in our heart, the Bible teaches us, right? But the law was a multitude of other things, right? We're not, you, nobody could do it then, and we sure can't do it now. If we could do it, we wouldn't need Jesus Christ, would we? Amen? Hallelujah. So I'm trying to explain the significance of grace. Grace, I can't brag. I'm saved and you're not. No, because I didn't do anything to get saved. I just asked Jesus to save me and he saved me. And now I'm a new creature in Christ because of Jesus. Not because of how much money I give to the church. Not because of how much I do. Not because of nothing like that. Because Jesus Christ died in my place on the cross at Calvary. The only reason, amen, we gotta get this, we're, this is newness, we're in newness through Jesus Christ and only through Jesus Christ. Don't go up in heaven and when the Father asks you, why should I let you in my kingdom? Will I pay my tax? Don't, no, don't go there. Don't, no. We're looking for Jesus. Where is Jesus? That's what you're going to ask the Father. And that's the reason why you should let me into your kingdom. Because he 
paid my price. Can we see it? It's pointed out the man wants to die. And then the judgment. Jesus died. The wages of sin is death. He who knew no sin became sin, died on the cross, taking sin to hell and leaving it there. Amen. So once you become born again, washed in the blood, you're walking in this newness, you don't have to sin. You're not, he set you free. You're not tied to sin anymore. That's why churchgoers and born-again believers are different because Jesus Christ cleansed the born-again believer. The churchgoer is just thinking that I'm a good guy. I go to church. I give money. It isn't about that. It's about accepting Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And now, he's our Lord. And there's a place in the New Testament where he tells us, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do what I say? We want to do what he says, right? And when we're doing what he says, we're walking in our newness. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's put some word on this. Let's go to, John chapter 13. If you got your Bibles, your telephones, your tablet, whatever. John chapter 13. Hallelujah. And look at verse 34. Look what Jesus is teaching us. He says, a new commandment I give unto you. Wow. Jesus Christ has given us a law of love. Can we see it? This is a new commandment. We got to keep this one. And this one fulfills the whole law. We'll see that as we progress into this message. Amen? Jesus is over here and he says uh, in verse 34 of John chapter 13, he says, a new commandment I give unto you that you love one another as I have loved you. Jesus died for us, didn't he? Well, we need to be willing to die for each other if need be. Amen. And at the very least, we can die a little for each other, do without for each other. My brother needs something. My sister needs something. I have it. And she needs it, or he needs it, I give it up. Do without it for her, for him. Can we see that? This is love. Amen. Hallelujah. He says, if I have loved you, that you also love one another. Now look what he says. We're talking about walking in our newness. We have to walk in love, my brothers and sisters, towards everybody. Amen? Right? He tells us to pray for our enemies. Bless those that this Bible uses. Pray, he says, pray for those. Amen? If your enemy hunger, feed them. If you thirst, give them a drink. So we have no enemy. We're loving everybody. Love your neighbor as yourself. Amen. There's no more eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. Right? You steal my cow, I can go and take four years. None of that. That's nonsense. Right? That's the law. People couldn't do it then. That's why we needed Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ did it. He fulfilled the law. He fulfilled the prop, the prophets. He fulfilled the Psalms. Amen. Now the Psalms is a prayer book for us. The law is a history book for us. 
right? Torah, see how they did it? We don't do that. Amen? Very important, because half of the church is deceived. Half of the church is everybody got them paying the tithe. There never was money. Tithe was never money. Amen. And Jesus Christ came to set us free. He says, according to our several ability, he says God loves a cheerful giver. He doesn't care if that's all you can afford is a quarter. Be cheerful. And, and God loves a cheerful giver. Can we see this? This is very important. I want to follow Jesus. I don't want to follow man. I want to follow Jesus. And Jesus has given us a new commandment that we love one another as he has loved us. He says in verse 35, by this all men, women, people. Amen? He says by this shall all men, women, people know that you are my disciples. They're going to know that you're following me. How are they going to know? Because I, I dress a certain holy way? Because I got a chain around my neck with a cross on it? No. By the way I love. Talking about walking in our newness. He's calling us to a higher order. We're kings and we're priests. Amen? We're not just churchgoers. We're kings and we're priests. He's calling us to a higher and a holier calling. Hallelujah. Can we see this? And if we're not obedient to, to Him, we don't have no fruit. He says he's divine, we're the branches, and he says we're going to bring forth much fruit. He's talking about love. We're bringing forth much love. We're tied to love. And love is flowing through us to the world. Can we see this? We don't hold grudges. I talked about it last week. We, we can't hold grudges. We can't be hateful. Amen. We have to love. Under every situation, they were whipping Jesus, spitting in his face, tearing the beard out of his face. He never said a railing accusation against them. He just submitted to what the Father told him to submit to. Can we see it? And people might spit on you. And people might cuss you for telling them about Jesus. We just pray for them. We don't fight with them. Amen? Hallelujah. Glory to God. So we can see Jesus Christ just gave us a new command. We got a new way of life right here. We have to love each other. Amen. And what is love? Can anybody explain to me what is love? Well, we're going to go to the Word of God and see what Jesus is telling us to do. If you will, go with me to Galatians. The book of Galatians. Chapter 5. Look at verse 22, I believe, we're going to start with. Amen. Chapter 5 and verse 22. He says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love. Now, if I got the Holy Spirit in me, because I am filled with the Holy Spirit, because if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you're none of His, the Bible says. So we need the Holy Spirit, don't we? We're talking about walking in our newness. Amen? 
And once we become born again, going to church doesn't save us. You have to ask Jesus to save you. He's the Savior. And you have to, with your lips, I say this every week, ask Jesus to be your Savior, to come into your heart and abide and let him have his way. We don't ask him in our heart and then put him in prison and do it our way anyway. No, we ask him in our heart and we want to grow into Christ-likeness. Can we see that? It's called being born again, my brothers and sisters. We'll talk about that later. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So here's Paul teaching us that the fruit of the Spirit is love. And then it has other fruit. If I love you, I'm going to have joy when I come around you. Brothers and sisters, sometimes you go to a church and it's like, these, these people don't even like each other, let alone love each other. We're supposed to be expressing Christ all the time. And this is walking in our newness. I got to I got to deny myself, pick up my cross, and follow Jesus. Can we see this? I have to crucify my old ways. See, Jesus Christ gave us a new heart, but we have to renew our mind. And Paul teaches us that we have to cast down evil imaginations all day long. What's evil? Well, you know, look at her. She thinks she's up. That's evil. Cast that down. Because we're supposed to love. We don't... The spirit man doesn't have any sight. Your eyes will deceive you. You, you start looking at things with a critical spirit, you're being deceived. you got to cast them thoughts down. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in this world. I can overcome these things through the love of the Holy Spirit that abiding in me. Can we see this? And when it's, it's our responsibility. If I'm a Christian, talking about a Christian, blood-bought, spirit-filled, not talking about just going to church. I'm talking about a Christian. Amen? Somebody that doesn't pay the tithe. You're a Christian. Christians have no business paying the tithe. Because Paul tells us in the book of Galatians that if we try to do the law, we fall from grace. We're cursed. They tell us if you don't pay your tithe, you're cursed with a curse. No. If you pay your tithe, you're cursed with a curse. We're talking about walking in our newness. I'm walking by faith. I don't have to give money to, to have faith. I don't have to starve my children or keep them in the dark to have faith. Amen? We're in, there's a new sheriff in town. His name is Jesus. And we have to get into this book and read it for ourselves. That's why the church is so deceived. They go to church and they listen to somebody he says, a stranger they will not follow. He said, my sheep know my voice. He's calling us to attention, my brothers and sisters. Let's pay attention and start following Jesus and not following man. Because man will leave you astray every single day of the week. Amen. Hallelujah. So now we see love. If I love you, I got joy when I'm with you. Right? Because the fruit of the Spirit is love. Hallelujah. And then when I love you, I have joy. I'm going to have peace. I don't have to worry about you stealing anything from me. Amen. Because we're walking in grace. We're walking in law. You can't steal nothing from me because if I got it, it's yours anyway. 
Can we see this? That's not my love, brothers and sisters. Amen. Hallelujah. He says, you know, if you need something, then I have it. It's yours. Didn't he tell us that? He told us to love one another as I have loved you. Well, his life was his, and he gave it to us. You can't give none more precious than your life. Amen. Glory to God. So we're going to get into the Word, aren't we? We're learning something. We're going to stop being deceived, aren't we? Amen. We're going to stop following the wolf and follow the shepherd. Amen. Hallelujah. So he goes on and he says, if I love you, I'm going to have peace when I'm wrong. If I love you, I'm going to have long suffering. I'm going to overlook some stuff. You might hurt me in a, in a way. But I'm, I love you. So I'm going to overlook that. I'm going to have broad shoulders and let you hurt me. Just like you're not hurting me. You're hurting Jesus. Can we understand this? We have to understand the word of God. Jesus says, when you do it to the least of these, my brethren, you've done it to me. Can we see this? Amen. Glory to God. So I want to have some long suffering. Glory. I'm going to have some gentleness. I'm going to have some goodness. I'm going to be faithful to you. Because I love you. I'm going to be gentle with you. I'm going to have goodness with you. Amen. Glory to God. I'm going to have patience with you. You don't know what I know. So I have to be patient with you and let you grow up. And while you're growing up, you might spit on me. You might call me all kinds of names. So I have, to, I'm the growing up. So I have to, I have the understanding. And I, I have the love. So I have to yield and worship God in spirit and in truth. By overlooking your inadequacies. You're not growing yet. You don't know the word of God yet. Amen. Hallelujah. Can we see it? So we're going to have goodness. We're going to be faithful. We're going to have meekness. I'm not going to be a tyrant. I'm going to be meek around you. No matter how you treat me. Amen? And have temperance. He says, against such there is no law. You just fulfilled the law. You just tithed. You just did everything. And you didn't do anything but love. Can we see our new commandment is powerful in Christ? Amen? Hallelujah. Glory to God. So we got to love each other. And by us loving each other, we're loving God. How do you worship God? Love your brother. Love your sister. And I'm worshiping God. Don't talk about your brother. Don't talk about your sister. Don't cause dissension and go to a place where they tell you if you don't tithe, you're cursed with a curse. Well, she's cursed anyway. No, 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 no. That ain't Christ's way. That's not Christ's way. You better leave that place. You better find yourself a real church. One that worships the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. You go to 1 John with. This is going to be an eye-opener for all of us. Chapter 4. 1 John chapter 4. Look at verse 20. 1 John chapter 4. He says, If a man say, I love God, and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he can see, God does he make sense. 
The Father is making sense here. Amen? How are you going to tell me that you love me and you can't see me? And the, the man or the woman next to you, you despise, you hate. And you're going to tell me you love me. And you can see them. Can we see this? Can we see what, the, what John is teaching us? He says, when man say, I love God and hates his brother, he's a liar. For he that loveth not his brother, whom he can see, he, whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? And this commandment have we from him, Jesus Christ, that he who loveth God loveth his brother also. And we see that. So if I say I love God and I'm talking about you behind your back, I'm deceived. That's what the Word of God is. We're talking about walking in our newness. Amen. First, I got to be aware that I have to condition myself to walk in this newness. I have to renew my mind. I got to stop being conformed to this world and start being transformed through the renewing of my mind. Because I got this new heart Jesus gave me. And if you keep on thinking about stuff, it'll sink down in your heart and you'll destroy your heart. So you have to renew your mind. You have to cast down evil imaginations all day long. Amen. Anything that's against the Word of God is an evil imagination. Amen. So here the Word of God is teaching us. Hallelujah. So I want to encourage us. Keep walking in your new Don't listen to man. Read the Bible. Read from the book of Matthew, the New Testament. We're in the New Testament. We're not in the Old Testament. Malachi is gone. Don't let them say Malachi, you're cursed with a curse if you don't die. Tithe was never money. There's a lot of stuff that's in the church and they, they don't even follow Jesus. They try to follow everybody else except Jesus. Brothers and sisters, we're called to follow Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now if I ask you a question right now and you were honest and I asked you, if you were to die right now, would you go to heaven or would you go to hell? And if you don't know, if you're not sure, you need to get on your knees with me and pray right now. Amen? If you're not sure whether you would go to heaven or whether you would go to hell, if you died right now, we're going to make sure that you're going to heaven. You might say, well, you can't do that. Yes, I can, because you just told me. Jesus, and Jesus can't lie. Amen? Hallelujah. Get on your knees right now, let's pray. You repeat after me. Holy Father, thank you, Lord, for giving me your one and only Son, Jesus Christ. Your word says you love the world so much you gave us your only begotten son. You also said, Father, that whosoever believes in him would not perish but have life eternal with you in heaven. Jesus, the Bible says, you're knocking at my heart. You desire to come in. Please forgive me of all my sins. 
Please cleanse me. Wash me thoroughly. Come into my heart. Be my Lord and be my Savior. Father, thank you for your son. Thank you for Jesus Christ. Thank you for saving me without any works of my own, but with the works of Jesus Christ on that cross. Thank you for raising him from the dead. Because now, through Jesus Christ, John, go right through the Bible. Acts, Amen. Romans, First and Second Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, go right through the whole Bible, all the way through Revelation. And then you can come back and start with Matthew. And then go to Acts. And go again through the whole Bible. Keep on reading the Bible. Don't let a man try to steer you wrong. They don't know where they're going. Can you understand me? They're wolves. Jesus Christ says that wolves creep in to the flock. Wolves in sheep's clothing. Read it for yourself, it's in there. And Jesus is warning us about it. I thank you very much for watching this broadcast. I give God praise for you. Thank you for giving your heart to Jesus if you've done that today. God Spiritual bless. Harvest Ministries, building the spirit man for Christ. Back on you 
the Lord God Almighty. Is the Lord God Almighty. And I forever sing. Oh. 